guess it's time to start this. Okay. Um, I was going to turn um, making candle snuffers. Well, they're pretty simple to make. And I didn't think it would take quite long enough to make a demonstration out of it. So I thought I'd make a, uh, uh, a Christmas ornament that's actually a little bell. Have a sinker inside here that uses for the clapper. It, it's not real loud, but it makes a little noise. And it would hang on a Christmas tree without much hassle. So anyway, the only difference between them are the candle snuffer is a little bit smaller, maybe a quarter inch or so smaller. And I make a, put a longer handle on it. It's the only, only two, two different things. But I thought I'd do this one. Okay. What I usually start out with is I, for, the, for the snuffers, I start with a piece that's maybe about an inch and a quarter square. This one's inch and three quarters, a little bit bigger. Start by putting, so you get to, I find the center on both ends. Uh, don't really need it on both ends, but I do it on both ends so that way when I get it put in, I can center up on the one end that's exposed. And uh, I'm not totally sure if this is quite the legal way to do this, but you can hold a square piece in, uh, in these uh, four jaw chucks pretty easily just by putting it in there and just clamping down on it. And it holds it pretty, pretty tight. I have had them toss out, but you get twisting this thing down until you herniate yourself and it'll usually hold it. Okay. Just to be on the safe side to, so the thing doesn't fly out, I always put it between centers, especially when I'm uh, rounding up the piece. This is a uh, hard maple, and uh, I find a hard maple is an excellent wood to, to turn on because it just it just really works really nice, and if you're really a good trimmer, you probably don't have to sand all that much. That's not my case, so I'm sure all of you can do much better job than I can. Okay, now that we got it, got, got the thing rounded up, we go to the next step. Like I said, as you can see, if it, if it was going to be a, a candle snuffer, you've already gone a long ways through it. <laughs> so, you're uh, I thought I'd make a little bit more of a project out of it while we were standing here doing it. Um, so I, I take and drill a hole in the end grain so it makes it easier to actually turn out the center. Uh, and it also gets it to a nice depth. And it's, it's kind, of, kind of small, so it's kind of difficult to turn in that real small area to hollow it out. And I'm going to go in all oh, about an inch, inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter, something like that. You probably don't want to go quite as fast when you're trying to drill as when you're trying to turn. Um, probably not particularly good on the drill bit, get too hot. And so I go down here, and this is an inch bit. Oh, maybe I ought to undo that and make it, make it screw in a lot easier, wouldn't it? And uh, just work it in. And if you notice, I use a rather spiral bit because it makes the end kind of shaped in there like. I kind of like to have the bottom shape a little bit, and this already does it for me. Okay, <clears throat> now that's the first thing we're going to drill. The next thing we're going to drill is how we're going to hook the other thing to it, and how you, how you turn the candle snuffer. I've taken, used 5 16 inch bit, okay? And what I do now is I take and re drill the next hole down in the bottom, and what this hole is for is to attach the, the handle at the top, or in the case of the bell, the little, little top piece here. Now, why did I pick 5 16 Well, at first, I thought, well, 5 16 seems like it's a pretty handy size. And uh, 
take half a moment here to make sure I get this. Can that scan about an inch? I'm going to go over an inch and a quarter, okay? So the top of the bell is going to be right about there, okay? I want a quarter inch to be able to put the handle in. So, with that's that and go to it and I'm going to drill the second hole in now too. We'll push that in well, I don't know, more than a quarter inch, okay? Because you know you want to go through the other side. And that's probably just about all you need to do. speed up just a little bit faster than the drilling speed. And now I'm going to turn the, make the flare for the, for the bell. Or in the case of the candle snapper, same sort of little flare thing. And um, I'm no, probably you won't be surprised. You probably have already done it yourself. You'll go out here on the edge of this thing because one of the important things about making making the bell is you need to have a very dense piece of wood, and then it needs to be turned very thin so that you'll get more of a bell action. If it's kind of like red oak or, or poplar or something like that. It just doesn't have the bell-like quality, even though that one there didn't ring very well. But I imagine if you did something like uh, bocote or, or maybe rosewood or some, some of those kind of woods that they used to make uh, xylophones out of, I'm sure they would ring even nicer than this. And as I was getting ready to say to you, and I'm sure you've noticed, you come out to the end of this thing and you make a really sharp edge. This stuff cuts, you know. Don't get your finger in there too quick, because it's just like a little spinning knife, you know, that the slicers you cut salami with. It does a great job. It really, it, it hurts. I'm going to show you. Now, you'll see that I've gone into that edge a little bit, and here's where that light works so good, because you can see right down in there, really, you really get into it and see, the, see where you want to go. But at this point, I've turned up in there a little ways, and that that distance is kind of you kind of have to figure it out. Let's see, it looks like it's about oh, maybe three eighths. So I want to come back and go up, go up here and mark on this piece about three eighths, half an inch, because I'm going to take and taper it in, and then come back out to make the bell portion of it. Because you have you have some thickness there, and you want to thin it off. That's where we're going to, that, that line is the top side of it. This line here is where it's just going to go in, in two and then come back out. You'll, you'll <coughs> catch what I'm talking about. Here. Mm -hmm. That thing gets, it's real sharp. Pardon me? Is it scary sharp? It's scary sharp. It's literally scary sharp. Touch it, show me. No, no. No, no. Thank you. 
I've told you, you can change them. Making the size bell you want, or the size, size candle snuff you want. Oh, looks like I did a bad job there, didn't I? I really cut some nasty little skew shape type there, but maybe we'll take that off in a second. I better do that now. I made two of these today, and none of them had that problem. Same here in front of you guys. Now, like I was telling you, you do want to make them thin, so we're going to go in here and try to remove Candle snuffers, I don't usually do this part of it. I just leave it straight to the interior. And, uh, Good time to get out a little sandpaper and smooth it. Pardon me? 36 grit? Not quite that. I mean, not quite that hard. 40? So, yeah. 45, 50, something like that. Yeah, whatever it requires is exactly right. I'll see if it's a little bit. Make sure it's looking halfway decent. There you go. <coughs> now, now I get to the next one. <coughs> See if I can keep from running, running away crazy with this gouge again. Now that I've got things smoothed up a little bit, we've got to do this last little bit in here. That's where it starts getting scary. At least for me. You guys don't like to do, right? One more, One more pass. Never do that last pass. Never ever do that last pass.
there's a hole in the middle there. Okay. Don't get carried away here. Form bees, uh, tongue oil finish, huh? Danish oil. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a tongue oil finish. Tongue oil, okay. Yeah, and it. Uh, I don't know if this is totally kosher, but I found that your, your four jaw shop has that inside inside piece in there, and it'll hold stuff too. Just clamp it down hard enough, and just kind of get it there on the corners, and it should be a good and tight. Put the tail stock up. Just to hold it a little bit. And go after it. Well, I go after it with the uh, guys there. Round it up a bit. And on this one, which is going to be a bell, I, I make it short piece so it's more of an ornament type type look. Well, I'm not. On the example of the of the snuffer, obviously I make a much longer handle. Tighten up now that the live stem on the tail stock is beginning to talk to me a little bit. I'm not very happy with what, what's going on. about a five eighths of an inch long. That's probably about right. And we want to add another quarter inch or so onto it to make the look the little tendon that we're going to fit down inside the hole here. Let's see something about that. Does that look about right? That looks right to me. But I'm sure you guys have all seen this trick before. 
get yourself a 5 16 inch wrench and use it as a gauge. And I just start working away at it until I get it to something close. Now Ted, he was obviously able to tell exactly 5 16 from 5 feet away, so he wouldn't have to use this. Right, Ted? I just had camera today, so oh, shoot, you, you're doing even better yet then, right? Try to make it some sort of a little bead there that looks halfway decent. And I better think about stopping here for a minute because there's another step I have to do before I get too carried away with this thing. <coughs> Which is when we start getting into the scary aspect of things. brass wire, but don't believe them. It's probably not brass, it's probably aluminum brass coated because it's really hard to find true brass wire anymore unless you have some kind of access to something like that. I've looked around for it, can't buy it at Hobby Lobby or any place like that. I use the uh, smallest bit I got, which is about a sixteenth, and that wire is a little bit larger than a sixteenth actually. Now I'm going to drill this thing, hopefully, pretty much all the way down through there. Now the problem you have here, which is the scary part, is the fact that the 16th inch bit likes to go just about every place but where you want it to. You bend, and you, know, you just have fun and go in all kinds of directions. But we're going to see if we can get it in there. I have turned them blue too, pushing in there too hard and too fast. And if it doesn't come out the bottom, absolutely in the center, you really don't care because that's up inside the, the bell, right? You just don't want it to come out the side of the knob. We're going to call that good and then I'm going to cut it off the other end to make it thick. important. This little area here, <coughs> where that is, you want to undercut it a little bit because the top of the, of the bell body is up like that. So you want to be able to go over top of where you're at. So, i see if I can push this just a little bit farther. down in those little tiny areas where you want right in there. Okay. 
problem is, the tip of that thing is small and it dulls and turns blue just about as soon as we touch the wood with it. And we'll see how well it goes. Remember the sandpaper once again, you probably want to go as many grits down as you like to get it nice and smooth. I'm not going to waste our time with that. I'm just going to get it a little smooth so it looks... I'm going to cut it off the... So it'll keep from losing this into the audience. Huh? We have any luck at all this should fit there it does but I did not get it trimmed up in there quite as far as I want so you can see there's a little crack there I don't know where it, mm, there if you look at that there's a little bit of an area there it's just a little I should have gone up in there just a little bit farther and I didn't get into it but it shows you how it's done now what we do here now is this stuff here. And this stuff here. And this is where it starts getting kind of tricky. Well, it's a lot of tricky in this thing, even though. Uh, this stuff is brass wire, I think. And I start by taking a drill bit and I just wrap it over a drill bit, okay? And hold on to a pair of pliers and just make a little eye. Just turn a little, twist it nice and tight and a little eye. Now, if you do this just right, it makes it so it makes it kind of like a little screw and it fits down in the little thing pretty easily. Okay. Hmm. Move it down through. Okay. And we'll take and push that in there. There we go. Now we got down there. Now, how long do we make it, guys? Slip it in there, and this piece has to go to someplace like right about there. Okay. Turn up here. I hope I got that measured right, or it's going to be kind of not so good, right? It won't be, won't be a clap of where it's supposed to be. Goes around. And as it would happen, these sinkers are exactly five sixteenths of an inch thick, so it just fits in there. Okay? And we will take and put a drop of CA glue on it. Hopefully, that'll make it work reasonably okay. Obviously, you folks take a little bit more time, and I'm sure they would look a lot nicer than this one. 
Usually you spray it, but this this particular kind, you just kind of let it dial on there. I hope I'm going to be able to get enough to go down in there to accelerate at the other end of this thing, you know what I mean? The tricky part is to get the clapper to come down not too far, so that you might want to take a couple more seconds when you do it to get it just right. There we go. That's it. And like I said, the snuffers are just smaller and a longer hand. <laughs> 